Hey guys, today we're going to talk about seven practical things that you can do to help protect yourself during a recession, inflation, depression, or any kind of economic crisis. We're talking about being prepared, folks, because tough times don't always give you a warning. We live in a world right now where inflation is crazy. I mean, you go to the grocery store and prices have doubled. You go to the fuel pump and prices are extremely high. It feels like somebody snuck in overnight and swapped out the price tags, right? This stuff affects all of us and it's easy to feel anxious when the economy throws a curveball. Just follow these steps to protect yourself and your family. Grab a hold of your budget. If you don't have one, get on it. Give it a good hard look. Separate the need to haves from the nice to haves. Food, shelter, utilities, the non-negotiables, daily lattes, gone. Eating out, history. New clothes every month, hold your horses. Cut back on what's draining your bank account. Be smart with your money, especially now. A penny saved is a penny earned. This isn't just about surviving, it's about thriving. Control your money, control your life. Now I know what you're thinking. Dave, I can barely afford groceries, let alone a financial advisor. And you know what, you might be right, but hear me out because this is important. A good financial advisor is like a coach for your money. They're not just there to tell you what to do, they're there to help you understand your options and make the best decisions for your situation. Think of it this way, if you were facing a serious medical issue, you wouldn't hesitate to see a doctor, right? Well, your financial health is just as important as your physical health. Now, I'm not saying you need to go out and hire some high-priced Wall Street hotshot. There are plenty of reputable financial advisors out there who work with everyday folks like you and me. The key is to find someone you trust, someone who understands your goals and is willing to work with you to achieve them. Look for someone who's certified, experienced and has a good track record and don't be afraid to ask questions. A good advisor will be happy to explain things in plain English and make sure you understand everything before you make any decisions. Remember, you're in the driver's seat when it comes to your money. A financial advisor is there to help you navigate the road ahead, but ultimately the decisions are yours to make. So, do your research, find a good advisor and get the guidance you need to weather any financial storm. All right, folks, let's talk about debt. That nasty, insidious beast that loves to suck the life out of your paycheck. If you're serious about surviving an economic crisis, you gotta slay this dragon. I'm talking about getting out of debt and staying out of debt. Because when you're up to your eyeballs in debt, you're vulnerable. You're at the mercy of creditors, interest rates, and a whole lot of financial stress. The first step is to stop digging. Put those credit cards on ice, cut up those store cards, and resist the urge to take on any new debt. It's time to live within your means, folks. And that means no more borrowing from your future self. Next, prioritize your debts. Start by tackling the ones with the highest interest rates first, while making minimum payments on the others. This is the snowball method, and it's the fastest way to get out of debt. Once you've knocked out those high interest debts, roll that money into the next one on your list. Keep the momentum going, and before you know it, you'll be debt-free and feeling lighter than a feather. Now, I know this isn't easy. Getting out of debt takes discipline, sacrifice, and a whole lot of hard work. But trust me, it's worth it. When you're debt-free, you have options, you have freedom, you're no longer a slave to the lender. And that, my friends, is a beautiful thing. Now let's talk about something a little different. Precious metals, specifically gold and silver. These shiny metals have been a store of value for centuries and for good reason. Unlike paper money, which can be printed into oblivion, gold and silver are finite resources. They can't be created out of thin air, which gives them intrinsic value. When the economy takes a nosedive, people tend to flock to safe haven assets like gold and silver. They see it as a way to protect their wealth from inflation and economic uncertainty. Now I'm not saying you should go out and dump your entire life savings into gold bars, but having a small allocation to precious metals as part of a diversified portfolio can be a smart move. Think of it as an insurance policy for your wealth. It's not about getting rich quick, it's about preserving your purchasing power over the long haul. There are a few different ways to invest in precious metals. You can buy physical gold and silver like coins or bars. You can invest in gold and silver ETFs, which are traded on the stock market, or you can invest in mining companies that produce gold and silver. 
The best option for you will depend on your individual circumstances and risk tolerance. So do your research, talk to a financial advisor, and make an informed decision. Look folks, relying on a single source of income is like putting all your eggs in one basket. If something happens to that basket, you're in trouble. That's why it's crucial to diversify your income streams. In today's economy, having a side hustle isn't just a good idea, it's practically essential. It gives you a financial safety net and helps you weather those economic storms. Now, I'm not saying you need to quit your day job and become an entrepreneur overnight, but there are plenty of ways to earn extra income on the side, even if you only have a few hours to spare each week. You could drive for a ride-sharing service, deliver food, walk dogs, tutor students, freelance your skills online, or even start a small business from home. The possibilities are endless. The key is to find something you enjoy and that fits into your lifestyle. Because let's face it, if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to stick with it. Having multiple income streams gives you peace of mind, knowing that if one source dries up, you've got others to fall back on. Plus, it can help you reach your financial goals faster, whether it's paying off debt, saving for a down payment, or investing for retirement. So get creative, explore your options, and start building those income streams. Let's face it, folks. Most of us have way too much stuff. We've got closets overflowing with clothes we never wear, garages cluttered with gadgets we never use, and attics filled with memories collecting dust. Well, guess what? That clutter isn't just taking up space. It's also tying up potential cash. And in times of economic uncertainty, every little bit helps. So roll up your sleeves, put on your decluttering hat, and get ready to turn that clutter into cash. It's time to host a good old-fashioned yard sale, or better yet, take advantage of the digital age and sell your stuff online. Platforms like Facebook, Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, and OfferUp have made it easier than ever to connect with buyers and sell your unwanted items. From clothes and furniture to electronics and collectibles, there's a market for almost everything these days. You'd be surprised what people are willing to pay for things you consider junk. Not only will you free up valuable space in your home, but you'll also pad your bank account in the process. It's a win-win situation. So what are you waiting for? Start decluttering and start cashing in. All right, folks, let's talk about prepping. Now, I'm not talking about building a bunker in your backyard or stockpiling enough supplies to last through a zombie apocalypse, but I'm talking about being prepared for the unexpected. Look. Life throws curveballs, whether it's a natural disaster, a job loss, or an economic downturn. And when those curveballs come your way, it's better to be prepared than caught off guard. Now, prepping doesn't have to be complicated or expensive. It's simply about taking some common sense steps to ensure you and your family are safe and secure, no matter what life throws your way. Start by building an emergency fund. This is your financial safety net, your rainy day fund, your oh crap money. Aim to have three to six months worth of living expenses saved up in a readily accessible account. Next, stock up on essential supplies. I'm talking about food, water, first aid kits, flashlights, batteries and other items you might need in an emergency. You don't need to go overboard, but having a few weeks worth of supplies on hand can make a world of difference. It's also a good idea to have a plan in place. Talk to your family about what you would do in different emergency scenarios like a natural disaster or a power outage. Having a plan can help reduce stress and ensure everyone knows what to do. Remember, prepping isn't about being paranoid, it's about being prepared. It's about taking control of your future and ensuring you and your family are safe and secure no matter what challenges lie ahead. So, seven things that honestly you should be doing anyway. In this time of economic volatility, it's important to tighten the belt a little bit and take care of things you need to take care of. Remember, we're not just talking about surviving, we're talking about thriving. It's packed with even more practical advice and tips to help you navigate these uncertain times. Thanks for watching.